Zoology Unit 4, first video lecture, Phylum Mollusca. Mollusks were the first animals to undergo protostome development. Remember, in protostome development, during the embryonic development, the dent is formed, forms the mouth, while the anus is later formed. It allows for the development of a cloam, which then, in turn, allows for organ systems to be continued to develop. These organ systems now have space and are able to be well developed. Mollusks have bilateral symmetry, and some species are hermaphrodites, while others have separate sexes. Mollusks also have a head, foot, and visceral mass. Visceral mass includes organs for digestion, circulation, reproduction, and respiration. The visceral mass also includes two external flaps of tissues called the mantle. Mollusks also make use of gills or lungs for gas exchange. The circulatory system contains a pumping heart and vessels, and we start to see a larger body size that's able to occur because of the advancements in the cardiovascular system. Things like the circulatory system with the pumping heart. The mantle, the first thing that we see here, is a membrane that surrounds the internal organs of a mollusk. If a shell is present, the mantle secretes a calcium carbonate substance to form the shell. So in our clam, so in our clam and our snail, this outer shell would be calcium carbonate. So this is the outer shell. And the mantle cavity is directly underneath it. It's that, it's that membrane. The radula is located in a mollusk's mouth and is used to scrape food into the mouth. So in our snail, our radula is here. In our squid, it's here. Herbivores, or herbivorous mollusks, use the radula to scrape food off of rocks, while carnivores use the radula to drill into the shells of other mollusks and feed. The radula and, of squids and octopus are used to tear apart food that's captured with the tentacles. Clams, like we see down here, like we see down here, are often filter feeders and therefore lack a radula. They just don't need it. The gills contain blood for transport for the transport of oxygen and for the removal of carbon dioxide. Gills move water into and through the mantle in a continuous stream. It's highly branched and increases the sur this allows to increase the surface area, allowing more oxygen to be taken in from the water. Most mollusks have an open circulatory system, including a chambered heart. This enables the animal this enables animals to diffuse oxygen and nutrients into tissues that are bathed in blood and also move carbon dioxide from tissues into the blood. Slow-moving animals use this effectively because they do not need rapid delivery of oxygen and nutrients. Some mollusks, like squids, require quick delivery of oxygen and nutrients and therefore have a closed circulatory system. A closed circulatory system provides for rapid deployment of oxygen and nutrients that's needed for quick, for quick movements. So our squid is going to be, is going to have a closed circulatory system, while our clam and our snail are going to be open. Most mollusks get rid of their wastes from cellular processes through a structure called nephridria. After nephridria filter the blood, waste is passed out through the mantle cavity. Mollusks have nervous systems that coordinate their movements and behavior. More evolved octopuses have brains, a complex eye similar to a human's eye. 
Other mollusks have simple structures that reflect light. The muscular foot of a clam enables it to burrow into wet sands. Mollusks with two shells can also clap their shells together for short bursts of rapid swimming. Most snails and slugs creep along moist areas on the slime trail of mucus that's secreted by glands in the foot. Octopus and squid take in water through the mantle and expel it through a tube called a siphon. So it's this lower, this lower tube. When threatened, they can eject water so rapidly that they appear to be jet propelled. So they can force water, so they can force water out of their body through the siphon, and they can ex they can expel it so forcefully, like and move quickly like a jet taking off. Mollusks reproduce sexually. Most aquatic species release their eggs and sperm into the water at the same time, and fertilization is external. A few bivalves that are terrestrial are hermaphrodites, in which case fertilization is internal. Remember, external fertilization is not a very practical reproductive strategy for terrestrial animals. All members of mollusca share similar developmental patterns, even though their adult forms vary widely. One larval stage, the tracheophore, looks very similar to a segmented worm. This leads scientists to believe that they share some common ancestry. We have three classes of mollusks, the gastropods, the bivalves, and the cephalopods. Our largest mollusk class is gastropodia. This includes snails and slugs. They tend to be smaller, 1 to 8 centimeters, but can be as big as 2 meters. They're found in all habitats, and many species spit a, fit a particular niche. Many of these gastropods are affected by parasites, the nematodes that we just, lo that we just studied. They often serve for food for birds and small mammals. These gastropods are known as the stomach-footed mollusks. They tend to have a single shell that they can quickly draw their bodies into for protection. Slugs do not have shells, but secrete a thick mucus that covers their body. The gastropod has a bilateral body and undergoes what's known as torsion. This affects the visceral mass during embryonic development. The shell may be coiled or uncoiled. The shell develops from a central point known as the apex. So the apex is the main point and the shell begins to grow outwards and develops from there. The swirling motion part of the shell begins increasing in size as development occurs around a signal axis. Genetics is used to determine the direction of coiling. Of all mollusks, only gastropods undergo torsion. Torsion is a particular phenomenon that moves the mantle cavity along with the visceral mass and shell up to 180 degrees. It's a two-step process. The first is rapid, taking only a few minutes in some species. During this step, an asymmetrical foot retractor muscle contracts and pulls the shell and enclosed viscera 90 degrees counterclockwise towards the head. So we see the, here's where we're beginning. And our first step of torsion, that shell begins to start rotating counterclockwise. The second step is much slower. Before to torsion, the embryo's mouth is anterior and the anus and mantle cavity are posterior. 
by the end of the second stage of torsion, the viscera has been pushed an additional 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now we can see the anus and mantle cavity become anterior and open superiorly to the mouth and the head. Our second class is class bivalva. This includes mussels, clams, scallops, oysters, and shipworms. These tend to be slightly smaller, up sizing up to one millimeter, up to one meter long. They're found in aquatic habitats, mostly, some, mostly marine. Some can be found in fresh water. Most are sedentary. They rely on cilia and current to move. These mollusks serve the purpose for food for birds, small mammals, and starfish. Given that they're class bivalva, bivalva, the prefix bi means two. So there are two shells, there are two valves. There's a hinge ligament that holds the valves slightly open and adductor muscles that are used to close the valves. The umbo is the oldest part of the shell and new rings of growth radiate from this region. Pearls are produced as mantles adds layers around an invader, a grain of sand or a parasite. So as a grain of sand or parasite enters the enters the internal part between the two shells, the mantle adds layers around it. Those layers eventually become condensed and produce pearls. Bivalves have a muscular foot that extends and swells to push and contracts and shortens to be ready for another push. Some bivalves open and close the valves to force water out, propelling the body in the opposite direction. So if you could imagine taking your hands, opening your hands, and when you close them again, you force air out of your hands. This is the same thing that would happen to a bivalve. We open the two valves, allowing water to enter, and as those valves get pushed closed, that water is forced outward, propelling the bivalve in the opposite direction. This is very similar to that jet propulsion. This is similar to that jet propulsion that we see in our last class, our gastropods. Most bivalves are filter feeders. Respiratory currents bring both oxygen and organic materials to the gills where cilia contracts, where cilia contract, track, where ciliary tracts direct them to tiny pores of the gills. Gland cells on the gills and labial plaps secrete copious amounts of mucus which entangles particles suspended in the water going through the gill pores. These masses slide down the outside of the gills toward food grooves at the lower edge of the gills. Heavier particles of sediment drop off the gills as a result of gravity, but smaller particles travel along the food grooves towards labial paps. Some bivalves are deposit feeding and have long proboscis attached to the labial paps. These can be protruded onto the sand or mud to collect food particles in addition to particles attracted by gill currents. Cephalopods include squid, octopus, nautilus, and cuttlefish. These can range from 2 to 3 centimeters up to 18 plus meters, 60 feet long, like the giant squid. They're marine, they're strictly marine, and are serious predators. There's not many things that may feed on, a cephalop on, on our cephalopods, especially the giant squid. The Nautilus has a spiral-shaped chambered shell, and it lives in the outermost portion. 
Most cephalopods have no obvious shell. The squid has the pen. The cuttlefish is enclosed the shell is enclosed within the mantle slightly, and the octopus has no particular shell. Most cephalopods other than nautilus have another prote have a protective device. An ink sac that empties into the rectum contains an ink gland that secretes sepia, a dark fluid containing the pigment melanin into the sac. When the animal is alarmed, it releases a cloud of ink which may hang in the water as a blob or be contorted by water currents. The animal quickly departs from the scene, leaving ink as a decor decoy to the predator. Cephalopods are deciduous, meaning that there are two distinct sexes. Sperm is transferred from the man, male's mantle cavity to the female's manta, mantle cavity, where, so they have internal fertilization. Active chromatophore displays by males are common. This is an attempt to attract a female mate. The development of cephalopods is, however, external.